Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we're going to take a look at the Siberian Free Territory. The Black Army might be long gone, and Yuri Galenskov long dead, but the peasants of Kunz were thankfully beneath Daddy Tabby's notice. Returning from their exile, hiding amongst the peasants, the former ideologues and committee leaders of the Siberian Free Territory have endured and returned to their anarchist traditions under the advisory leadership of Yevgenia Veratuta. Surrounded by authoritarians of all stripes, however, it remains to be seen whether or not the Free Territory will be able to endure or if they shall be forced underground one more time, or worst of all, utterly annihilated by the forces that now oppose them. Oh boy. And of course, we return to the normal Siberian Free Territory flag under Yevgenia Tartuta, and we should be getting an event. If you'd like to read about her, please go ahead, but freedom's cry. The poor boys of the Imperial Garrison were all not but skin and bones and sin. Shrunken into their shadows, but a mirage of someone long gone. Children born into Russia, not hack. They were killed brutally, torn to shreds, their blood painting the walls. The masses rose as one, a mass movement's character is that of the average of its people. Shared sentiments coalescing into one single fist. It is usually a fist of hope, a great leap towards something better. And that yet remain, for anarchism is but a deeply human sentiment. Being that of freedom, and humans, they were they j yet. But in the wake of the regent, who embroiled Russia in the nightmare, humanity began to resemble the nightmare. The average had changed, a dark drop of corruption had fell in the pool of human sentiment, and that mass fist became one, perhaps uh, not if of malice, of pain. Weapons sprung from the floorboards, having been waiting for the day of freedom, bullets sprang through the streets, and the appeals were gunned down, then gunned down more, and then for good measure, filled with more rounds. Were not for that the fact that they had already been twisted down into the soul, the bodies would have already been unrecognizable. The trees, the trees rang with cries and screams, but not many cheers. Murder, mayhem, and blood as anarchism and anarchy merged. A black flag was raised, a mass of one made of the cloaks of fallen soldiers, stained in blood, shadowing the garrison. Below it was the head of the governor, or what was left of it. Do her, her sons love mother anarchy? But here in the free territory, academic base, not research facilities, but agriculture, poverty, equipment, expertise are all going up. But unfortunately, professionalism, nuclear stockpile, as well as research facilities are not. And what do we just lose there? Regardless, we also have the National Spirit, Empty Magazines, Full Hearts. Factory output is quite bad, but Division, Defense, and Corps territory and production efficiency are a little better. Judgment Day. Some things had changed less than the people had hoped after the fall of the Holy Russian Empire. There were still public executions, though. Instead of lining the roads like the ones of old, they were in a slightly more avoidable place, the public square. A mixture of the dude to the bone and innocence swung from the ropes. Yevgenia Tartuta was smoking puff puff. She used to not smoke, but the prohibitions under the Empire made her miss the little ones or little ways one could kill themselves. She looked through the smoke at a local man responsible for a great deal of executions, those of collaborators and those of falsely accused collaborators. You know why I have to wear an eye patch, Tartuta, he said, his stone facial expressions barely moving. I'm sure it has to do with the regions, he chuckled. That question was less rhetorical than you thought. I don't remember. Working in the factory after the region died, the pains grew to my entire body. There was no specific pain, but my being ached. My soul ached. And I probably lost my eyes somewhere, but it was all too irrelevant to care. My condolences. He pointed to a man long gone purple on the short noose. He was a factory commissar. He's responsible for stories like mine. These dudes have to die. So don't you bad word tell us about worrying about innocence. If any of these gosh darn scum live, there won't be innocence left. Tartu to decide. There wasn't a point or a way to stop this. Justice will always win, she said. And justice is the people. Continue as you may. Justice for the darned. No unemployment subsidies for our libertarian socialist paradise? And of course, we do have some despotism under the Siberian Security Council. But it is what it is. Good minimum wage, flat taxes, medium taxation. Cool, very cool. Legal protections. Promoted gender equality. Equal rights and police. Right back to it, though. After a day of vengeance, heralded by the red sun's rise, a rogue and rouge, rouge and the warmth spread to earth. The redness and rivers of blood flowing through the streets of Kansk were reminding one of melted chains. The warmth in the fields, heat seemingly rising from the earth to warm hearts for the first time in years. The silly look of the fields. There was a time when he dreaded looking at a full field, knowing that most of it would go to the garrison, the mad regent. But now he looked and knew he was free, and knew his family was also free. He saw heads poking between tall wheat stalks, some dancing, some just working. It belonged to them all. He had learned. The owner was a general who was now a head who had his head on the stick. And the documents were burnt along with most other remnants of the government. Now the earth belonged to men, not the dead and not the cruel. 
A woman was speaking on a tall podium, grasping a book to her chest, taking breaks between words to draw from a long cigar. Worker, she said. And a loud yet mellow voice taught restraint by the dark times. The state has been killed. The region has been killed. All that is left is humanity and human spirits. Vasily smiled darn right. He can farm in peace, as he wanted. Now I ask you, the workers, to join us in the first conference. We shall decide for ourselves the direction of us, of Russia. Now that Vasily was less enthused about. Meetings were government, and government was a bullet. He'd stay home. The crops needed farming. He was not alone in this. When the first Siberian Soviet conference opened, Tartuta had found attendance quite lacking. All I wanted to do, though, was to live peacefully. Let's see. Minority protections. Basic training. No supervision. Total service equality for women. And we're on volunteer only. And we have a total population of a little bit less than 700,000 people here. Not great, but not bad. <clears throat> No true anarchists. Along the winding road, between the shadows of hills and out of the shadow left by man, came a man on a horse, his outfit and means of transportation telling not of the era of man he resided in. It could have been at the beginning of Russia. Perhaps this was indeed a second beginning. Are you Tarotuta? he said, barging into a meeting, cutting through a crowd. I am, she said, pausing from yet another speech on humanity, anarchism, utopia, and whatnot. You bad word traitor to the people, he said, pulling a message out of his bag. What? Who are you? The horseman made a flourishing display, turning his horse to the side and tilting his cap. People, I'm here to deliver a denouncement from a better man to an inferior woman. Heads turn and mumbles droom. Androni Mishurenko is the leader of the workers. He is the savior of the workers. He is the true liberator of the peasants and workers. Do not listen to the statists. Do not listen to the fascists. He brings us closer to the days of the region, Tartuta said. Luckily, upon not entirely deaf ears, but they were not fully open either. The day will come of peace. Peace will come, he says, when the protectors of the people are here, when they are in their rightful place, when the black army is here. Wait for joy, people. Taratuta was about to shout another response, but the horseman was off. After throwing the letter at her, she picked it up and opened it. Why can we not be free? Oh, empty tank. Oh, we got some weapon improvements. Oh, very cool. In the free territory. But how free are we truly? If we're under the watch or under the potential threat of... The Bratsk Communal Vanguard. Are we truly free? Are we? Hmm. Questions always to be asked. But, lessons learned. Vasily was still in the fields. His stomach had not been so full in such a long time, and he felt as if a physical weight had been lifted along with a spiritual one. He saw again the woman who gave so many speeches of the, to the peasants of Kansk. War comes, the Black Army comes. They claim to be anarchists. They claim to be the protectors of the people, but no. They are but bandits. Their black flag is closer to the bandits of Orsk than the flag of the people. Vasily was confused. The Black Army sounded good from what he had heard, and even did he know where Orsk was. His sack was full, so it was time to get back to the mill. What sounded of thunder woke Vasily from his nap. It was a shame, he thought. It had been so long since he had been able to slack off. Being free of a boss was nice, he thought, but something horrible interrupted his thoughts. Anna, the girl he fancied, was face down, and he could hear her crying. Before he got up to go and help her, he saw the source of thunder, a horseman in black, followed by another one in the same uniform. Finish off the hoe and take her food. Harvest is good this year. Looks fine. The man's voice was hoarse and bereft of compassion. Been a long time since we've been able to eat good. God bless Mishrenko, and gosh darn the regent. Ain't God in religion status? Ain't we? They laughed, leaving the dying girl behind. Vasily ran to her aid, but knew not if he could save her. Why is still why is war still here? In the land of freedom. Which we do go to war with them. I don't remember if these guys have any soldiers. They probably do. Well, let's take a quick, quick, quick look. Let's see if we can conquer these guys. In Bratsk. They have a single division. And our soldiers might be strong enough to beat them up. We shall see. Yeah, they are not strong enough, but that is okay. Keep going, keep going, keep going. As long as we keep them in place and we can get our soldiers up there, that is the most important thing that we can do. Keep them in place. Screw it, force the attack. We get Bratsk, we win. Oh, we're actually starting to win there too, nice. Very, very costly. And we have the capital. Get in there. Very good. There you go. Oh, hello. You should be able to win. They might have a slight bit of armor, but they are entrenched. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's another tattoo. Oh, please kill them off. Please kill them off. Come on, come on. Good, good, good. Good, 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 my friends. You should have that fine. No problems. It's amazing that they were able to deploy a tank that quickly. 4% strength? Well, they're dead now. 
And we shall have this last tile. Hopefully they'll capitulate. Oh, they already have. But I guess that is the end of the Siberian Free Territory. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching, have a great, great, tremendous rest of your day.